guys so today's video is going to be a little bit uh well i guess not different i'm still talking about like science shit sorry it's not gonna be different today's video is going to be about the california wildfires and what's going on with federal aid and like all of that stuff so just to give like a brief overview there's at least 13 large fires ranged across California, threatening more than 16,000 homes and leading to evacuation orders for nearly 25,000 residents. So nearly 14,000 firefighters are on the lines of fires statewide, as well as several hundred active military troops. Oh, and including people, uh, firefighters from other countries. Uh, I think it's two other countries. And in the past 40 days, and think about that, 40 days. California has spent more than half the state's 442.8 million annual so-called e-fund budget. Let's just continue on with this article that I really wanted to read to you guys because I think it's very informative. I hope that you find it informative as well and I'm probably just going to pause and like comment on a lot of these things but I think it's really well written. I'll link it down below if you want to read it and check it out. So California is burning. More than 15,000 firefighters have been fighting wildfires across the state. As of Monday, the Mendocino Complex fire became the largest in California history. Sorry, let me pause real quick. I was actually talking to my friend the other day and she was and she was asking me like, why why is it always on the news that it's the biggest fire in history? Like is it really the biggest fire in history? And like, yes, it is. Like Sorry, like here's a map of the, yeah, you know. But I think it's like notable to say the fact that we keep hearing record breaking. So let me just like insert this here real quick. Part of what Trump blames for the California wildfires is the trees the fact that there's trees like his solution what he wants to propose is that we cut down all of the trees because that's what ca what's causing the wildfires like you understand that dry climate equals dry environment equals easier fuel for fires <laughs> i don't even have to explain why this is stupid but anyways let me just go back to the video as of Monday, the Mendocino Complex fire became the largest in California history. Donald Trump recognized the tragedy by inaccurately condemning the state's water policies. This should give pause, not because of what the president says, but because of the point this marks in Trump's long ongoing war with California. Here's what he said on Monday. Governor Jerry Brown must allow the free flow of vast amounts of water coming from the north and foolishly diverted into the Pacific Ocean. Can be used for fires and everything else. Think of California with plenty of water. Nice. Fast federal government approvals. There's a couple comments that I have on that, but this article addresses it. So let me... Plenty of digital ink has been spilled by journalists and experts responsibly trying to parse the president's bizarre declaration. His claims have no scientific basis at all and have little to do with the tragedy going on right now. You might think a few strange things about that tweet aside from neglecting to express any sympathy for Californians who have lost their lives and some their homes. And one note, one odd note is the appearance of farming in a tweet that's ostensibly about wildfires. Another is fast federal government approvals. What does government approval have to do with fires and approvals of what? Let me just keep going. The most obvious answer, though not the only one, is, as I'll argue shortly, is disaster relief. The Trump administration's aid to California has been stingy. Consider the president's response to the 2017 wildfires. While some hurricane relief funding, including funds to rebuild, was supplied to the southern states in the White House's November 2017 disaster aid request to, Cong to Congress, not a cent was initially designated for victims of the California wildfires to rebuild. Even Republican Senator John Corrin added the White House's disaster relief budget Wally called the White House's disaster relief budget Wally inaccurate inadequate sorry honestly it means more i mean 
it means the same amount, but like when a Republican criticizes Trump, that's like how you know he's doing some f- up shit because re- I, and I know I'm not speaking for all Republicans, but Republicans are so quick to suck Trump's dick on whatever policy or like whatever bullshit he wants to shit talk. So when somebody actually calls him out on his shit coming from his own party, I'm like, thank you. Trump's longstanding hostility to California is no secret. In February 2017, he told Bill O'Reilly that California was out of control and said that withholding federal funds would be a weapon. He'd used to punish the state for opposing him. Because he's a little <laughs> Given this admission, lawmakers nervous about a Trump vendetta have taken peculiar steps. 13 of 14 Republicans refused to sign their own state's request for federal aid following the 2017 floods and wildfires. The Republicans signed a separate letter, one uncontaminated by Democrats. These are the sorts of real effects a petty, vindictive president achieves. Nor is there much reason to believe things have changed since last year. While Trump approved a disaster declaration this past Sunday that would make some federal aid available to Shasta County, where the car fire has raged since late July. Sorry, let me get... You'll know why I'm mad in a minute. He had to tweet something nasty about California's governor. It's also not unreasonable to note that the county went for Trump in twenty in the 2016 election. Sorry, I have to comment before I continue. But the fact that he's, like, I'm not saying don't give Shasta County aid because they definitely deserve it. All of these counties where these fires are located deserve aid. But he's prioritizing, sorry, he's prioritizing a county that voted for him over Mendocino County, who currently has the largest wildfire in the history of California active right now this moment (laughs) let me continue (laughs) so more funds have been requested by lawmakers to provide relief for other affected California counties like Lake Mendocino and Napa counties now have huge blazes of their own within which to contend Republican House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy has added his voice to the bipartisan request for additional aid but will Trump help the earliest an answer would come is the end of the week after damage assessment is completed but the mere fact that there's a question about this is synoptic to the government's to the government by suspense he inflicts on the country and on California in particular. Trump's ill will towards a state that won't bend to him. It has, in fact, filed 29 suits against his administration, which I would love to make another video about, has a long and bitter history. He certainly could not be happy about the vandalism of his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which he bought in 2007, perhaps some speculated to distract from a feud with Rosie O'Donnell. But now the star has been vandalized so often that West Hollywood City Council has approved a, symbol- a symbolic revolu- sorry, a symbolic resolution to remove it. Hollywood's repulsion of the man has been near universal, as any awards show will attest. And Trump's other efforts to make his mark on the state have been similarly disappointing. During the campaign, he liked to say he'd be the first Republican to win the state in decades, but he lost to Hillary Clinton by an incredible 4.3 million votes. I just wanted to be like, fuck you. Sorry, I had to say that. Anyways. <laughs> That figure became the basis for Trump's false claim that there was rampant voter fraud. No, we just don't like you. He couldn't have lost the state by that much. Yes, you could. It, It must have been the illegal immigrants. No, it wasn't. We just don't f*** with you. This man is furious with a state that seems invulnerable to him. But it's a political project that California has been a fly in Trump's ointment. The world's fifth largest economy is succeeding widely in defiance of Trump's every prescription. As Bloomberg's Matthew Winkler 
argues the state disapproves Trump's policies at every turn. Trump credits environmental deregulation and cutting taxes for the rich for the humming American economy, and yet Jerry Brown's agenda, which almost perfectly opposes Trump's, has accompanied even better growth. California's 4.9% increase in GDP last year was more than twice the gain for the U.S. and enabled the state's jobless rate to slide down to 4.2%, the lowest on record since such data was compiled in 1976. Stop shit-talking California. And the state has done it while leading on policies meant to combat climate change. That's why it's the golden state. So far, Trump has not been able to bring this out-of-control pro-immigrant state to heal. His attempt to punish California for sanctuary cities by weaponizing federal funds backfired. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals determined that the president had exceeded his authority since only Congress can put conditions on federal funds. The same man who in 1988 was hyping the dangers of California earthquakes has slashed the earthquake budget. He's currently attacking California's ability to regulate its own fuel emissions. His administration is now in the business of arguing that loser gas mileage requirements would actually be better for the environment. He made a point looking at wall prototypes while in California, knowing that the majority of residents here abhear the idea. This is a man furious with a state that seems invulnerable to him. So that brings us back to the fires. Here, as ever with Trump, the urgent underlying question is not the issue itself. The man clearly considers the fire beside the point, but what grievance or financial opportunity is currently driving the president's decision making and the tweet statement was not about fire, it was about water. As I read it specifically, it was about his administration's efforts to increase the height of Shasta Dam, which stands in the one county that has so far received federal aid. The dam is an odd little episode in the larger story of California's water wars, but it has yet to turn out to be one of the weirder chapters in the tale of Trump's administration's corruption. In brief, Trump's administration wants to fund a $1.3 billion project to increase the dam's height by two stories, ostensibly for water storage, and you guessed it, farming. His proposal would violate California state law, including one requiring that the natural flow of rivers be maintained. So who does a bigger dam benefit? Central Valley Farms. For one, especially those that grow water-intensive crops like almonds, the project would also massively benefit Westland's Water District, the biggest irrigation district in the state whose interests were until quite recently represented by a lobbyist. David Bernhardt is now the number two at Trump's Interior Department, an agency his previous firm sued four times while collecting more than $1 million from Westlands for promoting its water interests and challenging endangered species protections for fish like the California salmon. If the dam project goes through, it would flow miles of the McLeod River in violation of state law. The Winman Wintu tribe, which is or which has already lost much of its land in the initial construction of the dam, would see much of its remaining sacred ground flooded. Congress, undeterred, has approved twenty million dollars for pre-construction pre-construction planning. While this sounds like a bingo card of things Trump loves, eliminating environmental protections, disenfranchising Native Americans, sacrificing public lands to private interests, and richly rewarding specifically the Californians who voted for him while flouting the laws of a state whose disobedience he resents. California's main objective to the dam expansion pertains to protecting McLeod under the state's Wild and Scenic Rivers Act passed in 1968 to preserve the river's free-flowing condition, where whatever his intent may be in falsely asserting that the state is sending away water or impairing free flow and fast government approval, or in telling Jerry Brown that he, what he should do, Trump can't help but tell us what he's thinking about, and it's not Americans in need of help. Sorry, um, I don't mean to like just read fully, but I thought that kind of captured it perfectly. And so add this to the challenges facing California wildfire victims. Tariffs. 
The important tariffs imposed by President Donald Trump are adding thousands of dollars to the cost of building homes that especially squeezes homeowners who seek to rebuild quickly after losing their homes to natural disasters, such as wildfire scorching parts of California. The Trump administration's the Trump administration's tariffs had raised the cost of imported lumber, drywall, nails, and other key construction materials. One building association official said tariffs could raise the price of a typical new home in California by up to $20,000, and it could be more for the individual homes being custom built on the sh short order. That could be enough to keep some people with inadequate homes homeowners insurance from rebuilding or force them to reconsider or to consider a smaller house. Other factors are also making home construction more expensive, including shortage of workers and increased demand that has pushed up the price of materials produced in the U.S. The difference with the tariff-related cost increase is a direct result of a governmental change policy. Tariffs are now just over 20% on imported Canadian lumber and 25% on steel imported from certain nations as well as the goods from China. I'm just going to stop reading right there. I think you guys understand why I'm pissed at what's happening right now because all of this like yes the wildfires would still be happening yes people would still be in like this position right now even if like no matter who was in office but the fact that trump's petty little ass is making it so much more difficult for people to be able to recover from this just because they didn't vote for him <clears throat> let me stop don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so that you can keep watching me talk shit about like real shit that's happening like i promise you guys i'm unless i specifically say like this is my own theory or like this is something that isn't scientifically backed like i'll i will warn you if it's not but it is okay like <laughs> everything i'm telling you is credible you can look it up yourself if you don't believe me and do your own research which i encourage you to do but um yeah i hope i've taught you something today uh. and um yeah have a good one don't forget to hug a tree Thank you.